One of the oldest race battles that blacks have fought in this country has been the battle to be recognized as fully human, to be regarded not in the in-between status somewhere between ape and human, but to be fully human. And this is an old battle that on the surface at least appears to be largely forgotten. In fact, when we asked Stanford undergraduates to tell us what social group is associated with apes, most had no knowledge that black Americans are associated with apes. When we asked what animals are associated with black Americans, again, most had no knowledge of an association between blacks and apes. And in fact, in no study that I know about do people express explicit knowledge um, of a stereotypic association between blacks and apes. Um, yet in study after study, we're finding that people still today make this association, and this association alters how blacks are seen and treated in the modern world. So we began to test people's implicit association or implicit knowledge of this association uh, by using the same, some of the same paradigms that I showed you earlier. So, um, for example, in the first study, we demonstrate that the stereotypic association between uh, blacks and apes um, is strong enough to uh, shape visual attention. Um, in this particular study, we expose people to faces just as we've done um, in the other studies. Um, so they're, again, exposed to these faces subliminally. Either they're exposed to the black faces or the white faces. Um, and then we have uh, participants perform uh, this um, um, degraded objects task. And just like in previous studies, you know, they're shown the objects. They're really degraded. They become more clear. But this time, all of the objects are animals. Um, and um, some of the animals are apes like this. Um, others are non-apes like alligators and squirrels and elephants, okay? And we hypothesized that participants would be faster um, to detect the apes when they'd been first exposed to the black um, faces as compared to the white faces. Okay, so let's look at the results here. Um, so you can see here that when they're... Um, uh, judging the non-apes, uh, the race of the face that they've been exposed to beforehand doesn't matter at all. Um, but when they're detecting the apes, it makes a big difference, okay? Simple exposure to the black faces beforehand reduces the threshold at which uh, people can actually recognize um, these ape images. So the black faces, once again, they're facilitating the detection of the ape images. Now, I have to say uh, that these uh, results uh, just stopped me in my tracks. For the first time in my career, I looked at study results, um, and I just had to say, have mercy. <laughs> we kept running the study. We repeated it to make sure the effect was real, um, and the result was always the same. We tested the association backwards and forwards, and the result was always the same. Um, so, so, for example, in this next study, um, we subliminally ha primed half of our study participants with the um, ape line drawings this time of ape images, and then we gave them the dot probe task, just like I showed you before. And um, you can see here uh, the same kind of result um, when they're not primed with anything at all. Uh, they're drawn to the white face. They're detecting the dot in the location of the white face faster. But when they're primed um, with the ape images, they're detecting that dot um, in the location of the uh, black face faster. Um, so um, the ape images are, you know, leading to this attentional bias uh, towards the black uh, face. Okay, uh, now we measured this effect in milliseconds, um, but we want to argue that decades are packed um, in those milliseconds. Centuries are reflected in those milliseconds. So with these studies, we've established that blacks are still associated with apes, um, and that association is strong enough to influence visual perception and attention. So next we wanted to examine how this association might influence how blacks are pre perceived and treated in the criminal justice context. And we thought that this association might really matter here because it could influence how dangerous uh, black suspects are, are perceived as being, and that could also influence how much violence is okay to direct at them. So to examine this, we invited uh, white male undergraduates into the lab, and we primed them this time with words associated with great apes or words associated with uh, big cats. And uh, we used big cats like lions and tigers, not bears, uh, but um, panthers and uh, cheetahs and cougars and things like that. And we were trying to um, use these um, the big uh, cat primes as a control. We wanted to have another um, group of animals where people uh, thought those animals were dangerous or predators 
predatory because we want to make the argument that it's not just a general association of blacks as being more dangerous or, or predatory, but it has to do, the effects that we're getting have to do with this specific association with uh, black people in this, in this particular um, um, group of animals. Um, so um, they were primed with the, the, the ape words or the big cat words. And then next we had them watch a video clip of a police beating. And I'm going to show you this video clip in its entirety. It just lasts for about a couple minutes. And hopefully um, it's going to play and we'll hear the sound. We'll see. Following film documents, the police arrest of a suspect believed to be involved in armed robbery in 2017 2004. Those family describes him as a loving husband and father. His police record indicates a history of drug involvement and criminal violence. According to police reports, the suspect was believed to be under the influence of a mind altering drug, possibly PCP, at the time of his film. Police report indicates that the arrest followed several days of tracking the suspect and led to pursuit on the foot. Okay, so now we chose this particular videotape to show to uh, subjects because you can't actually see the race of the suspect, right? So this allowed us to manipulate the race of the suspect at the beginning with the picture of the black guy that you saw um, in the version that you saw or with the picture of um, the white guy. Um, so let me go over the procedure again. Uh, so they're primed with the great ape words or the big cat words. Then they see this video where they're led to believe that the suspect is black or white. And then we ask them uh, simply how justified um, and necessary uh, was, the, was the beating that they witnessed here. Okay, so here are the results. Um, and you can see here that when the participants thought that the suspect was white, priming them uh, with the ape words didn't uh, make them think that the uh, beating was any more justified. But when the participants thought that the suspect was black, the ape uh, primes made a huge difference, okay? When they were exposed to words like chimp, gorilla, orangutan, uh, they, the participants thought that the black suspect uh, was much more deserving of the beating he got, okay? They were much more likely to believe that the black suspect's behavior uh, made the beating necessary, and they were much more likely to believe that the police were justified in the amount of force that they used. Okay, uh, finally, we conducted a study to examine the extent to which animal imagery is related to uh, death sentencing decisions. Um, for this study, we took um, the same large data set that I told you about before with the death eligible defendants that was put together by David Baldus and colleagues. Um, and um, uh, this data set uh, contained uh, black and white defendants who were uh, convicted of crimes that occurred in Philadelphia, um, and, this, um, and they became eligible uh, for death um, somewhere between 1979 and 1999. Um, and what we did is that we attempted to locate uh, newspaper articles that were written about these defendants in the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer, and we had naive um, raiders code these news articles uh, on animal imagery. So they uh, coded the, the articles for words like animal, barbaric, predator, savage, and so forth, okay? And we were interested in whether um, we would get more animal imagery um, um, in the news articles for the black defendants than for the white defendants, and that's what we found. Okay. Um, now, um, for this study, we were also interested in whether um, you could actually look at this amount of animal imagery as a predictor for whether they got sentenced to death or not. And we found um, that that was the case. Um, for the defendants who um, ultimately got a death sentence, there was much more animal imagery in the news articles written about them than the, than the defendant uh, who ultimately got a life sentence. Okay, um, so egregious. Uh, in my mind, 
this counts as some egregious modern bias. Um, it might be based on implicit knowledge, um, but when we take a moment to look at the result of that knowledge, two words come to mind. Have mercy. Thank you.